All right, guys, make another quick video. Uh, today, I want to talk about Femi, how Femi taught. Uh, Femi's really interesting. Um, Femi, obviously, on an insane multi-day run from uh, $0.33 cents all the way to $4.75. Um, you know, you start getting these, you know, strong cycles. You start getting 1,000%, 1,500% runners. Um and what's interesting about these plays is almost everyone kind of knows they're going to top, right? Everyone knows, you know, stock up 1,000 to 2,000% is probably not going to maintain um, its push. It's, 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 it's unless something very unique has happened. Um, some, like, crazy unexpected good news. I mean, look at something like AMAM. This thing is still trading in ten dollars and everyone remembers this day where it started at 40 cents but this is one of those you know black swan biotechs you know it's like it's the biotech dream you know what i mean of uh an almost violent violent stock being heavily accumulated and, and supported but that's not what we're talking about stocks like femi stocks like you know yell and tup you know bankruptcy stocks these like bottom out uh you know, almost delisted runners, um, tons of dilution. You know, these are the plays where there's no real liquidity. It's just a massive rig that goes way higher than people think. Uh, you know, and what's interesting about these plays is everyone's always trying to catch the big fade, right? Everyone's always trying to, everyone knows, oh, it's trading hundreds of millions of shares, it's up 1,500%, it's going to give an insane fade. Um, but what you'll see is most people, most, most, uh, most of these heavily rigged and manipulated tickers don't make it easy to catch the big fade. They really don't. Like every once in a while, you get you you catch a short that's that where there's heavy capitulation. You get 50% dumps in you know half an hour, and it's amazing. But most of the time, that doesn't happen. Most of the time, there's a lot of games leading up to the dump. And I want to talk about Femi. Sadly, Femi, as the rig went on. Shares became either impossible to find or super expensive. I couldn't find any shares this day uh, on this chart, which is really sad because this is the exact same chart with the exact same liquidity move that RNAS did that I wa was able to short, was able to overnight. They did the offering, you know, 80% fade from entry, that type of thing. Uh, but yeah, if, if you saw my Twitter, I said... Uh, you know, I, I was watching this fade. So you got your big push, right? Pulls, pushes right, insane big volume, right? Consistent, huge volume, pushes right to 4.5. And like I showed in that half, fake half dollar, whole dollar resistance, you know, they, they hold it right before 4.5, do one more squeeze and then pull it, right? But what's interesting about this chart is whenever I see big fades, like big instantaneous fades like this, right? I'm always thinking, you know, where a short's position, where a long's position, because unless there's like insider dumping happening, unless there's um, dilution, you know, which you, especially with like insider dumps, you, you never totally know if it's happening or not. Um, a lot of times, um, you know, on strong, heavily rigged plays, uh, the, the, when you get quick dumps like this, there's always backside gains because there's so many shorts in the money and there's so many longs getting stopped out. So you, you create that imbalance, right? So I'm just watching Femi all day. And I see the, the big fade. I see the, like, aggressive... This is, again, the, the aggressive push off a of deep support. I never think this is strong. <laughs> I see a move like this. Of like I was like, wow, that seems like a great short at $4, $4 in VWAP. Um, but then... You know, I'm always reading the chart. I see this lower high, right? I see this lower high. Um, and I see it pull back, and I see it pull back. And I thought this was just going to fade. I thought they were just doing a backside move, give a little fake bull push right here, and then pull it. And then they d pushed it again, and I'm like, well, where's this going to go? And that sold right at $4 again. And I was like, oh, like I said, in that screenshot on my Twitter, it was like, they're painting four, right? So they pull it back again, and I'm like, man, there's a lot of $4 paint. Look at look at all these lower highs. And when a stock is significantly extended, you know, lower highs don't necessarily mean that 
it's going to do some crazy move where it squeezes the high day. A lot of times it's just it's a painted liquidity level, just like Arnaz at 2.6. And what do you do in the after hours? After hours, it's easier, easier to move stock. You get an aggressive. When I see aggressive moves like this, a lot of times these are just liquidity swipes. They're just pushing it to a liquidity level, and then and, and then once they hit the level they want, they pull it, right? So I'm like, man, I was like, this is really like the big brain short, right? The 4.2, because it's it's over all these lower highs, pushes the 4.2, pulls back. I see the volume decreasing, and I'm just like, this is a great swing short up. Same as Arnaz, and, you know, and this is a good example of the type of price action that, like, 1,500% multi-day runners do, right, or some black swan squeezes do, because there's too many shorts chasing, uh, the imbalance is too great, it's too easy to manipulate the backside, and, uh, yeah, unsurprisingly, here's that entry, and it faded, it's all the way at, like, it's a more than 50% fade, um, but problem with tiny floats like this, or, or, you know, or, or just how the, how the, how the locates go is sometimes it's, it's they're, they locates don't exist or it's insanely expensive. They're expensive to overnight. You know, AVGR was another play where it's just like they did the pattern replication. They faked people out with the uh, after hours squeeze, and then you got a fifty percent fade. But unless you paid thirty cents for shares, and then you know you paid overnight fees for four, five, six days in a row, it's just like. Um, you're not going to be in it, and uh, it's, it's just how it goes. And sometimes you get lucky, you know. Luckily, Yell. We go back to Yell. Yell's a good example of how manipulated the back. This is on the OTC now. Um, go back to Yell. What on this? Do this day. So go to hourly. Yale had its big squeeze from forty cents to five dollars, right? And then you get a big, big sell-off day, right? Where it's it's everyone thinks the pump is over. It's super weak. It's going down. You know this is at the bottom of this candle. This is a fifty percent fade from highs from here to here. That's a fifty percent fade. Shorts loading in. They're pyramiding, right? They're building a position, and then. What happens? You get an aggressive squeeze on the backside that that pretty much shakes out every single lower high. You know, all these shorts pyramiding and chasing, but at the same time has no intention of breaking high a day, right? And and look how just relentless they were in these days, man. Um, it's just absolutely insane games on this play. Um, yeah, here's a you know I remember shorting. Uh, I remember there's this hidden seller at 4.42. I was hoping that would push. Um, remember shorting this move. Remember shorting this move. These aggressive pushes off of support. I always, especially on extended tickers, I always think are really weak. And look at this, like they even do that. And then they even do another after hours swipe. Like, look at this. It's just like they're just trying to swipe backside liquidity. Until the until the real fade happens, until the real like 50, 60, 70 percent fade happens, um, and I remember being really aggressive on this push and this structure because I saw this little high day clear out. I saw the secondary push and I loaded up in this structure, and I'm just like, this is worth swinging. Um, and then yeah, you got a PR that dropped, that dumped, and then the next day I woke, I I swung. This is back when I was only swinging like 40% of my position because I wasn't super used to holding just big size. And I remember getting this dump in the, in the pre-market and I was up like 70, 75%. I was like, one, it's one of my first really big swing shorts. Um, but yeah, this is really, if you see these thousand percent runners with tons of liquidity, these are the types of games you see, right? Or, or something like Arnaz where it's just, you know, uh, um, you know, a black swan market open squeeze until into like heavy manipulated backside with painted levels and all types of stuff. Uh, it's really, and, and Tup was the same way. Tup did the same type of just crazy, crazy moves. Um, but yeah, uh, sadly could not trade. Uh, Femi would have loved to be in in the 420s in the after hours, swinging that. Um, 
And even if I would have just covered it like 2.5 the next day, it would have been a great trade. Uh, but you just kind of do it. But yeah, uh, always, I guess the main lesson here is just always think about, oh, th the final example was TTOO. Uh, Short Bear traded this perfectly because he understands, <laughs> Short Bear understands liquidity. Um, this is the best example. I actually should have put this in the beginning of the video. But anyways, TTOO goes on this insane insane run from five cents to uh to 74 cents and then look at this on the 16th man you get your big capitulation right and what happens well, like shorts think the move is over and a lot you know of course you can make a ton of money in this move but look at the backside games and on multi-day runners you often have to look at longer time frames like look at the hourly look at the daily look at like at least the 15 minute the hourly the daily like like stocks that go on multi-day runs for you know 10 15 days often make backside moves also on a multi-day time frame right so um you get a nice long fake out into the dump but look at the bounce this is what's important right you get at this aggressive bounce the 0.6 rejects 0.6 again right see these lower highs this 0.6 level is pretty heavily defended but you have these like nice painted lower highs Okay, and then it rejects the next day. You get a big dump, looks super weak. People are just adding to the positions here. But then let's look at what happens on the backside. On the backside, you get an aggressive bounce. And again, we have this 0.6 level from over here, 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 here. Um, you get this aggressive bounce into a pre-market squeeze the next day. And I could actually go through my old Discord messages. I was, I, was, I was talking about this. I'm like, this is such an interesting short above. If this just goes straight through 0.6, it's such an interesting short. And, um, you know, it does like a great to have this like, and it's great when you get an intraday pattern that matches up with a larger swing thesis, right? So it's like, Okay, 0.6, that's a, that's a great level to squeeze. Look at this move, <laughs> great level to squeeze. But then you, you still want like a nice intraday pattern, like a bearish intraday pattern. And then like, look at this, 0.63, heavily painted. Market open, pushes right to it, rejects it, gives it like a, a very, a bid prop that looks like it's going to squeeze again. And, uh, and then it's, it's the beginning of the fade. And that's it. And then this faded all the way down to 0.25. Where is it at? It's at <laughs> 0.15 now. But uh, you got you got a nice, like you could see on the hourly, you can see the levels, man. You could see all these levels. And you know, and you can always think about where are swing shorts, like where are shorts trying to load in? What's their averages? What are they thinking when they see these types of dumps? Like um, where are most of them stuck? Like most of the trade, most of the volume, on, on the dump day was all under 0.6. So you know their averages are down there. And what, what does market maker do? He just, he just swipes the backside liquidity and then they do the... Re <laughs> it's, it, it's the same thing you see on low floats, on like day one rigged low floats. It's the same thing, but it's set on day one. You know, it's on a, it's on a multi-day time frame, right? It's just, it's the same. Here's a flag, here's a push. Here's the aggressive backside move, and then, you know, it's go to, go to later, and then it's just an insane dump. Like it's 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 the real fate. <laughs> it's like where the real trade is. You know, Carvana, Carvana's the same way right now, right? Carvana makes a big aggressive move, painted painted. I actually shorted Carvana on this candle, and then I got squeezed here. <laughs> but same same idea. Big multi-day runner move, painted painted backside level, right here. You know, aggressive squeeze. It looks like it's gonna break highs, and then they just pull it. I mean, this is this is perfect, man. Um, man, I have a, I have a friend who has a massive seven-figure profit on this. Just insane, um, insane foresight, perfect liquidity move, perfect topping action. Just it's the same thing you see on low floats, just on a multi-day time frame. So. Uh, yeah, so that's something I really developed this year. Um, it's been working out well. 
just some low floats, you pray that there's cheap borrows, there's cheap overnight fees, and you get a pattern that works. <laughs> like, and that's why trading's not easy. You need a lot of different things lining up, especially if you're shorting low floats. You need a lot of different things lining up. Um, and then you have to hope it works, but if it does, you can make a lot of money on it. So, uh, yeah, interesting little thing. Uh, in my in my Discord, I actually call this swing short opportunities, where you know I just track the moves, track the painted levels. You know, here's TTOO. Um, here's top. Right. Remember when all these crazy backside moves that it looked like it was go to squeeze high day and then they pulled it and it faded, you know, 50%. <laughs> 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 remember, remember that? Remember Arnaz? Remember that? <laughs> remember GNS here? You know, nice little long trap right before high, right before end of day and then they pull it. Um, I, sw I swung that, that was nice. Um, CGC, same concept. 1.5 on the backside is same concept as TTOO. 1.5 on the backside painted. They swipe it. They give a nice intraday pattern. Sadly, I was not in this one. Um, give a nice fade. Like, nice little weed sector pump into uh, a backside, a little little shakeout, and then a big fade. Um, XLA also did one, but this ended up getting this ended up fading 40% and then coming back up. Crazy enough. So um, anyway, interesting video. Short opportunities, I track them. Uh, there's many I have to add, so my problem is I keep adding things to my Discord. <laughs> I keep not opening it, but uh, I'll make a video soon talking about how you can join and all that stuff. So, hope that's interesting, guys. Uh, you know, on these small today runs, you know, look at the chart paint, look at the t look at the aggressiveness and it, the type of movies being made, right? Think about the levels, right, and how those levels are getting broken. And look at the reaction and try to form a thesis about, you know, what's happening. Um, and yeah, and you can hit some of these on this on on a swing, you know, swing trading side. And uh, you know, and then you wake up the next day. You know, if it's weekend after hours, you wake up the next day in the pre market. And a lot of times there's a big gap down, right? And then you're trading twenty percent in the money, suddenly forty percent in the money, and then that type of thing. So, um, anyways, hope that was a good one. See you guys.